going once, twice. Okay, so let's talk about the process of your work, right? So I actually do paint as well, but I have to be in a certain mind frame to get into the painting. So what is your process? How do you get into that space? Well, it's different because, you know, if you live in New York, it's not a game. Yeah. There's no, you know, it happens like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when someone says dance, you dance. When they say sing, you sing. You know, when they say paint, yeah. you paint. So I think for me, the mindset is that when I jump on this painting, I'm it's like a it's like a mixed martial art fight. I'm not stopping until I end up with the best painting you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I'm protecting the artists, right? Because we do have a lot of young coming up artists in Kenya who get screwed over time and time again from pricing themselves to well, once they see freelance, then it's just a whole other mess. What advice would you give them when starting out and just developing their work? Um, study economics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's quite simple. The rules are always the same. Take the time out, go to YouTube, go to ConAcademy.org and study economics, microfinance, study what money is. Because as an artist, you're creating a commodity. That commodity is being traded for another commodity, which is money. And that person who's getting that painting, they're probably trading it for another commodity, which is more money than they bought it from you. And the person who gets it puts it on the wall and it's a te technically something to ease their mind and soul, but later on, it's traded as an investment. You know, so once you understand this, you understand that, you know, there's a price, there's a price for you, your time is actually your investment, mm -hmm. your time, your materials, and then you want to return on that. So you have to determine what your time is worth, what your materials is worth. Always if you're, if, you know, there's a whole thing called 2.5, like wholesale retail, right? Mm -hmm. Wholesale, that's the cost of it. So you're going to sell, wholesale to someone, mm -hmm. that person's going to put it in retail. So they're going to always mark it up 2.5. Yeah. So if you can figure out what the retail price of it's going to be, then you can divide down to figure out what your what your sales price is going to be. Interesting. So, okay, back to your art, right? On music, it's such a big influence. Grew up in New York and Miami. Music was literally coming yeah. out of there strong. And that's seen in your art. However, I would have thought New York is more of a hip-hop, but you're painting Beethoven and you're painting more of a classic. Why is that? I think for me, I used to listen to classic music because I, I, you know, I had sleeping problems. Yeah. So I've tried everything, you know, except for drugs. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that classical music allows me to sleep better. Okay. And so I've listened to Beethoven, Bach, Chopin. So it's something that I know because I listen to it when I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and in terms of music, in terms of popular music, mm -hmm. um, there's not that. You know, if I paint a, a subject matter, mm -hmm. like I have to really have a deep connection to it. Mm -hmm. You know. And also, I used to work for a record label, yeah. you know, so I worked for Def Jam Records. Yes. So I've been around and I've done album covers. I've done about two album covers that became platinum albums. Mm -hmm. So I have two platinum plaques at my house. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually my mother's house. Um, so I've done that already, you know. So one of the things that I, I'm not, I'm not um, prone to is repetition. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like don't like repetition. Mm -hmm. So when someone calls me too much or taps me on the shoulder too much, it just... So if I can, I, I want to do the same thing over and over and over. I've yeah. done that, I've mastered it, let's move on. And the fashion in your art, the influence, I mean you're painting the icons but you're, you're stripping them there. Basically they are skulls. Why? Why do you strip them so bad? I think that one of the biggest problems in our society is, um, is racism, mm -hmm. you know, or tribalism, mm -hmm. you know. When everyone thinks that, oh, you're this tribe, or you're that tribe, or you're this color, you're that color, this is your religion, that that's your religion. It, it just creates these separatists. Mm -hmm. it's just, we're just all separated. And we're not thinking about who we really are. I mean, we're people. Mm -hmm. So underneath whatever you your skin is, because the skin technically is an organ, mm -hmm. underneath one organ mm -hmm. is who you really are. Mm 
and that's your experiences, your feelings, your fears, your angers, and your love, mm -hmm. you know? So I use the color to represent all those things mm -hmm. and also your relationship with the other person. Mm -hmm. So the colors are kind of the re representation of your soul, your spirit. Mm -hmm. you know? um, I hear that you're gonna be working with about 20 young ladies today yes. actually, right, at Shafco. So tell with, me more about that. With Shafco? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much um, a kind of mentoring and painting session mm -hmm. where I sit and talk with them about creating art and also the business of art mm -hmm. and also the business of succeeding, mm -hmm. you know, because succeeding is a business, mm -hmm. you know. So getting them kind of prepared, mentally prepared to just achieve their goals. You came right after there was an attack. Yes. And a lot of people have pulled out of coming into Kenya. Yes. Because of fear. Why? What made you say, you know what, I'm still coming? No, I, I got calls from everyone. Oh my God, you're going to Kenya. Yeah. <laughs> I stand more of a chance getting shot in America than I do in Kenya, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's, it's just the numbers. I, I, pull, I, look, I, I look at numbers. If you look at the stats of stabbings, robbings, murderer, murderings, I have a studio in Miami, and you go and look at their stats, they're just such high, much higher. Mm -hmm. So the chances of me getting um, in an attack here, it's very slim, mm -hmm. you know. So, and also, like, I'm, I'm for supporting um, African countries. Mm -hmm. So why would I pull out? I mean, that makes no sense. If I'm for it, then even if it's at the risk of my life, I would do it. Mm -hmm. You had a speech impediment when you were younger. How does yeah. that influence your art now? Um, well, it's actually really funny because people say I talk a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, but when I was growing up, I didn't really talk, mm -hmm. you know. Actually, I probably didn't talk until I have real cohesive conversations with people until probably mm, 23, mm -hmm. 23, 24, mm -hmm. you know? Um, my friends knew me, because they could understand me, but if you didn't know me, you were like, what is he talking about? Because mm -hmm. it was very technical. Mm -hmm. So anything technical, I knew how to like, you know, just rattle it off, you know? Mm -hmm.